Hey, let's use the Angular CLI to automatically migrate an existing Angular application to standalone components. Standalone components make it easier to build Angular applications because they don't need an Angular module, also called an NG module. That means that you can build your component without having to declare that component in an NG module somewhere. You can combine standalone components with traditional NG module-based components, or you can build an entire Angular application without any Angular modules. If you aren't familiar with standalone components, consider watching my Simplify with Angular Standalone Components video first. You can find the link in the upper right corner now, or in this video's notes. Standalone components were provided in Angular version 14 as a developer preview. In version 15.2, Angular provided a schematic to help migrate an existing project to standalone. What's a schematic? A schematic provides the code generation feature behind the Angular CLI, including ng-generate, ng-add, and ng-update. Anytime you use the Angular CLI to generate some code, the instructions for how that code is generated is provided in a schematic. Are you ready to use the Angular CLI to automatically update a basic Angular application to standalone components? Here is the Acme Product Management application. If you've seen my Angular Getting Started course, this code may look familiar. Let's run the code to ensure it all works before we migrate it. Here is our welcome page. Click on Product List, and we see a list of products. We display our product code in lowercase and use a custom pipe to display the code with spaces instead of dashes. Notice how the currency is nicely formatted as a currency, and we use a custom component to show the product rating as stars. Click on a product and we see its detail. Click back to go back. I'll stop the execution and close the terminal. Let's take a brief look at the code. Here in our home folder is our welcome component. It is not currently standalone. It's declared in an ng module, the app module. I'll open it to the side here. Every time we create a component that is not standalone, we declare it in an Angular module. In the Products folder, I'll open the Product List component, and I'll bring up the Product module on the right. The Product List component is also not standalone. The Product List component is declared here in the Product module, along with the other product components and our custom pipe. The Product module also imports our Shared module. The shared module is in the shared folder. The shared module declares our shared components, which is only our star component, which displays stars in our template. Looking again at the app module, the product module is imported here. All of our components and other modules are pulled together in this app module. Diagrammatically, the application structure looks like this. Our shared module declares our star component and imports common module for features such as ng4 and ngif. It exports the start component, common module, and forms module for two-way binding. That way, any module that imports the shared module has access to these features. Our product module declares our product components and our custom pipe. It imports the router module for product routing and the shared module so the product templates can display stars, access ngif and ng4, and use two-way binding. Our app module declares our basic application components, including the app component and welcome component. It imports browser module, HTTP client module for sending HTTP requests, and router module for our main routing and it imports our product module to pull our product features into the application. Wouldn't our application be so much easier to understand and work with without these Angular modules? 
Each component could then stand on its own and import only what it needs. Going back to the code, before we move on, let's take a quick look at main.ts. Here we bootstrap, or start up, the application by calling bootstrap module and passing in our app module. Looking at our app module and scrolling down, it bootstraps the first component, our app component. So we bootstrap the app module, which in turn bootstraps the app component. Opening the app component, it is the app component template that provides the main page of the application. Here is our navigation bar. All of our other page content is displayed in this router outlet. I'll close these files. Before migrating to standalone, there are several suggested prerequisites. First, use Angular 15.2 or higher. Looking at the package.json file, we're using Angular version 16. So check. Ensure the project builds and runs without any compilation error. We saw it running earlier, so check. And have a backup of the project. I've saved a backup of this project in GitHub, so another check. We are ready for migration to standalone. Using the Angular CLI to automatically migrate our project to standalone requires three steps. First, we convert all of our components, directives, and pipes to standalone. This basically adds the standalone true to the attributes and adds required dependencies to their imports array. Next, we remove all of the unused ng modules. Lastly, we bootstrap the project using standalone so it knows how to start up without an ng module. And it's a good idea to ensure that the application still runs between each step. Note that the migration may break your tests. It does perform some updates to the test files, but you may need to make additional modifications. Let's begin. To use the new standalone schematic, open a terminal window. I'll make it a bit bigger. Then run the command ng-generate, or just g, at angular slash core colon standalone. Here are the three steps we just discussed. We'll start with the first step, convert all components, directives, and pipes to standalone. Press enter, and the schematic asks for the path to be migrated relative to the project root. Use a feature folder if you want to migrate sections of the project incrementally. Incremental migration is often a good idea for large projects. But our project is small, so we'll go with the default path to migrate the entire application in one pass. Press Enter. The schematic will convert every component, directive, and pipe in the selected folder, except for any component defined as the bootstrap component in the app module. In our case, it updated each of our components and our custom pipe, but not our app component. The schematic also updated our existing ng modules. Now that our components are standalone, the components don't need to be declared in an ng module, so the declarations were removed. Let's see what this step did. And with the magic of video, we can put the code before this step and after this step side by side. I'll close the terminal window for more space. We'll start with the welcome component. On the right is the code before the migration. On the left is the code after the migration. Notice that the schematic added standalone true to the component decorator properties. Cool. Let's look at the product list component. Again, we have the before on the right and the after here on the left. We see that the schematic again added standalone true in the component decorator properties. But look at this imports array. I'll do a little reformatting of our imports so we can see all of them. Now that we are no longer using the Angular module to define everything that our component needs, we have to define them here instead in the imports array property of the component decorator. The schematic we ran detected what the components template needed and added it to the imports array. That brings up an important point. Notice that we use the import declaration here at the top. 
This import is a JavaScript feature that lets JavaScript know what libraries that this code uses. This import's array property of the component decorator is an Angular feature that lets Angular know which features that this component's template uses. Let's bring up this component's template. I'll open it to the side and close Explorer for more space. Here on line 10, we have two-way binding. That requires forms module, so the schematic added forms module in the component imports array. Check. Here on line 14, we use an ng if, so we need that in our imports array as well. Check. Line 21 is another ng if. Scrolling down. Line 38 has an ng4. It's here in our imports array. Check. Line 47 uses the router link directive, so we need that in our imports array as well. Check. Line 51 uses the built-in lowercase pipe and our custom convert to spaces pipe. The schematic added both of these to our imports array. Check and check. Line 53 uses the built-in currency pipe. Check. Lines 55 through 57 uses our star component to display the rating as stars. The schematic added that to our imports array as well. Check. So now our imports array identifies every Angular feature that our template uses. I'll close these files. Each of the components and custom pipes in this project are now standalone, except one. Let's look at the app component. Here on the right is from before the migration, and the left is after. It has not yet been transformed to standalone. That's because the schematic won't update the component defined as the bootstrap component at this step. The schematic will do that in the last step of our three-step process. Let's close these files and look at our modules. Product module, shared module, and app module. Again, the before will be on the right and the after on the left. The product module no longer has declarations for our product components or custom pipe. Rather, it uses its imports to pull in all of the standalone components, our pipe, and our shared module. Standalone components can be imported into any module, which is important when using standalone components with components that use ng modules. The shared module no longer has the declaration for our shared components, which was the star component. Rather, the module imports and exports the star component. If the star component is only used by other standalone components, this module is no longer needed. The app module only has the declarations for our app component. It still has our routes and imports the product module and our standalone welcome component. Notice that the bootstrapping hasn't changed yet. Now let's close the files and move on to the next step of the migration, removing our unused ng modules. Let's open our terminal window, clear the window, and then run ng g for generate at angular slash core colon standalone. This time we'll run the second step, remove unnecessary ng module classes, Use the down arrow key to select the step and press Enter. Press Enter again to select the default path. And it's done. Notice that it only deleted the shared module, not the product module or app module. The schematic will only delete a module if the module has no declarations, no providers, no bootstrap components, no class members, and no imports that reference a module with providers. What does that last one mean? If an ng module has providers, such as router module for child, the module can't be automatically transformed to standalone and deleted. We'll have to do that manually. Closing the terminal and looking at the product module, the schematic couldn't automatically delete it because we have our routes defined here with router module for child. I'll cover how to handle routing without ng modules in a separate video. The only change that was made was to delete the shared module from the imports array since that module was deleted. And looking at our app module, 
It also contains our routes and our bootstrapping. Let's switch to standalone bootstrapping next. I'll close the files and open the terminal window. I'll clear the screen and we'll run the migration tool for a third time. I'll use the up arrow key to display the prior command, then press enter. This time we'll select the third step, bootstrap the application using standalone APIs. This schematic will update the bootstrapping to replace the bootstrap module function with the new standalone bootstrap application function. Add standalone true to the root component. Copy providers or imports into the new bootstrap application call if possible and delete the root app ng module. Use the arrow keys to move down and press enter. And enter again to select the default path. It deleted our app module and updated main, our app component, and our app component test file. I'll close the terminal and open main.ts here on the left. On the right is the code before this step, main.ts at the top, and the app module at the bottom. Instead of bootstrapping our application by calling platform browser dynamic .bootstrap module and passing in our app module, the migrated code calls bootstrap application. It passes in the app component and an optional set of configuration options. As part of the configuration options, we can define a set of providers. The migration imported providers from our browser module and product module. Instead of importing HTTP client module, the migration adds it to the providers array using provide HTTP client. And instead of importing router module for root or for child, the migration used provide router to define the routes. So we are no longer bootstrapping with the app module, which then bootstraps with the app component. We instead bootstrap directly with the app component using the configuration options to provide the system services, routes, and other functionality needed for the application. I'll cover additional details of bootstrapping using standalone in a separate video. Let's run and see if it still works. And there is our welcome page. Click product list and we see our products. Click a product and we see its detail. Click back and it goes back. It still works. Using the Angular CLI provides a quick and easy path for migrating to standalone components. Once the automated process is done, you may want to perform some additional changes, such as moving routes out of any feature modules, like our product module, so those feature modules can be deleted. And improving the bootstrapping in main by moving providers out into their own configuration file and moving routes out of providers into their own file. We ultimately want our structure to look like this. Here, each component stands alone and only references what it uses. This is much easier to understand and work with without the Angular modules. To dive into the details of routing and bootstrapping with standalone components, look for those specific videos here on my channel. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.